Entrepreneurship is an interesting term insofar as if you pull it apart, which is often what you should do to try and understand what something is by reference to what it's called. And the term entrepreneur, if we break it up, is about firstly going in between something, entre, and then taking hold of it in some way and playing with it. So to be an entrepreneur is to be someone who is capable of finding spaces, niches, gaps, cracks, and occupying them in some way, and taking them on, and playing about with them, imaginatively, creatively. Entrepreneurship is also about a relationship to the future. So the entrepreneur is a figure who is able to relate to what's to come in a way that resists the urge to know what's to come. They take what you might call a, a leap into the blankness, into the, what is not there. And in taking that leap, they configure what's to come because the future does not exist. So in many ways, they are people who create futures as they go along. It's interesting to bring fashion and entrepreneurship together because fashion by its very nature is about newness, it's about change, it's about what's going to be this coming season rather than what was last season. So there is a, an apparent intimacy between entrepreneurship and fashion insofar as fashion is all about what's to come and not at all about what's gone. So we have this almost obsessive concern with change. But of course, if you think about it, nothing can happen in a vacuum. And fashion especially relies on the past, on what's gone, in order to help it configure what's to come. And very often, the seasonal innovation is a riff on what's gone. So the entrepreneurial elements of fashion become quite nuanced and complicated themselves because the entrepreneurial figure in a fashion context is someone who is able to take the past, to work from within the past, to respect the past, and in doing so, disclose something new. And this takes it way outside of what you might call mass-produced fashion. Because mass-produced fashion is all about spotting trends that already exist and scaling them up and doing it with a degree of rapidity. So to be fashionable, you have to be up on trend. You have to be up with the latest look. But you also have to be willing to dispense with that look. The whole point is that you don't cling on to anything. As soon as you take something up, by that fact, it ceases to be fashionable and it has to fall away. So there's this, this cycle of replacement, there's this cycle of dispensing with what you once desired. So envy just comes in and again and again and again and it just drives this. And you're almost on this kind of Schopenhauer, this, the philosopher Schopenhauer articulated this as a pendulum of doom. So you go from feeling that your desire has been consummated, that somehow you've attained something, you've achieved something, you've arrived somewhere. And right at that very moment, you are then disappointed because you're still desirous of something. So the pendulum swing swings back. And yet again, you're in this state of longing, of wanting, of needing to have the next thing. And when that's satisfied, you're disappointed again. And fashion relies on this pendulum. Without it, it doesn't work. So the entrepreneurial in relation to fashion is in a kind of curious space because if we're talking about an entrepreneur as someone who occupies the gaps, takes in between spaces, looks to disturb from within those gaps in creative, playful ways, then the entrepreneurial force in fashion is very much one of destroying this cycle of envy and desire of disturbing it at least, of playing around with it, so that you are no longer configured by the fact that you have to have the very next thing, 
that somewhat ironically the entrepreneurial force in a context of fashion is about looking backwards and staying backwards and being content with what once was rather than constantly hungering for what one could become because that's the orthodoxy and if entrepreneurship is about disturbance then it has to look elsewhere from the orthodox and in fashion that's an inherently conservative trait that you look back, you look to solidity, you look to tradition and you find something there that you can live with a while. That would be an entrepreneurial moment in the context of fashion in a way that in other contexts it might not be. So we have a sense that fashion is an important part of any economy. Fashion contributes to the growth of society in two ways. One is an obvious one where we talk about growth as in economic growth, if you like, where it plays an important role in allowing small firms to emerge, to grow themselves with support from policy organizations, from governments, from larger firms who are investing in them, especially the entrepreneurial side of fashion, where you are encouraged to be creative, to innovate, to commit yourself in such a way that as a collective thing, the, the economy becomes larger. But I think more importantly, fashion contributes to the growth of your capacity to be what we call affected. So here the growth is almost an emotional growth, which is also a collective thing, that it enables us to respond to one another in really interesting ways that otherwise would not be the case, because what fashion does is it advertises ourselves to one another. It says, here I am, yeah. there you are, can we relate in some way? And that in itself is a very powerful force. It's an invitation it's an opportunity, if you like, to use an entrepreneurial term. And there's nothing necessarily economic about that, but it's a powerful force of growth because attraction breeds attraction. Breeds attraction. And I think with, without that, if we all just wandered around in the standard uniform, you would have a very mute, deaf society, one in which everyone was assigned an allotted role and performed it with a degree of diligence, and there would be no kind of creative coming together and falling away. And entrepreneurial fashion is about animating a society like this. It's about agitating. And by increasing our capacity to, to feel, we are learning to be with one another in different and interesting ways. And that is a definition of growth.